Hello there and welcome back. If your school has some sort of a back to school night or meet the teacher night, you might want a set of slides playing on a loop in the background. That way you can display relevant information without having to go through the slides one by one. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a looping slideshow using Google Slides. I'm gonna walk you through how to set up your looping slideshow in Google Slides step by step. Then I will share some ideas for other ways you might use this. And finally, I will answer some frequently asked questions. But I do wanna point out that if you would prefer written step-by-step -step directions, I do have those available over on my website. You can go to pocketfullprimary.com slash Google Slides looping, but I will also leave the link for you down below in the description box. The very first step is just to create the slides that you want to play on a loop. So for example, if you are going to have slides playing during a back to school night, you might have have a little cover intro slide, some information about yourself or maybe the whole team. Then you might have contact information displayed as well as information about a class website, maybe school supplies that students are going to need, your schedule, so on and so forth. Now, I can't tell you exactly what to put on the slides because that depends on your school, your grade level, your district, et cetera. But if you are looking for a template, this is actually available in my TPT store. It has all of the design elements done for you. So the titles, the clip art, from there, you get to add your own information and you can even customize the background. So these are a great starting point. If you're not sure what slides you should include, you can go off of what I've already included, but obviously delete the slides that are not relevant or that you don't need. I will say creating the slides from the get-go can be a little bit daunting, a little bit overwhelming, but keep in mind, once you have created this once, you can reuse it from year to year. Obviously, you might have to make a few changes, and if you switch grade levels or schools, that's gonna require even more changes. But once you put the work in once, so long as you stay in the same position, you can reuse it again and again. Now, in order to get this to play on a loop, we need to publish the file to the web. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on file. I'm gonna come down to share, but I'm just gonna hover over it with my mouse. That way this other little window opens up and I'm gonna choose publish to web. It's gonna open up a new box. From here, I have two options, link or embed. We're gonna come back to embed later as another option. For now, we're gonna focus on linking it. Underneath, you will see a few different options that you can choose from. So first, you can choose how quickly you want the slides to advance. It will default to three seconds, but maybe you wanna up it to five or 10 seconds. You can make that choice. Personally, if I want this to play on a loop in the background, I check both of these boxes. So I want the slideshow to start as soon as the player loads, and I also want it to restart the slideshow after the last slide. That's what creates that loop, so it will just keep playing on and on. Then I'm going to press the publish button. Another little window will pop up just to say, are you sure you want to publish this selection? I'm gonna click OK. Now I have a link that I can paste into a new tab in order to play that slideshow on a loop. So I'm gonna copy this link, which it gives me the little shortcut here because I'm using a Mac, it is Command C, but if you are using a PC, you can use Control C. Now I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm going to paste that URL. When I hit enter, it's now going to display those slides and they will be on a loop. I chose five seconds, so after five seconds, it will automatically advance to the next slide and it will play continuously on a loop until I close out that window. Now, because this is being used in my browser, I can actually go full screen in my browser and then it looks like a full screen slideshow, just like you would see within Google Slides. A few ideas of how you might use this feature. I already mentioned that you might want a slideshow playing on a loop in the background of a back to school night or meet the teacher night or any other school events that maybe you're helping out at or you could always pass along this idea to those who are in charge of those events but it's just a great way to display information for anyone attending then because you have that link you can then send that link to families who were not able to attend 
the event. So for example, after back to school night, I could send out an email to all of my students' families and I could have the link to the slideshow. That way they can view it. Of course, I could also share just the view only link from Google Slides, but I do think it's nice to share that autoplay link where as soon as they open it up, it's just gonna automatically advance through the slides and it displays like a slideshow rather than them opening it up within that kind of edit view of Google Slides. Another option is to embed the slides on a class website. If you're not sure what I mean by class website, here is an example. Obviously this one is fake, but it's essentially a home base for your class. So you can link to forms and curriculum information, information about you as the teacher or the other fourth grade teachers, your schedule, expectations, contact information, but that way it is all in one place. I do have a YouTube video where I walk you through how to create this from start to finish. So if you're interested in that, I will have the link in the description box. But I do wanna quickly show you how to embed the slides on the website. Remember earlier when we published to the web, not only was there a link, but there also was embed. So that's what we're gonna use now. In order to get back to that window, I'm gonna choose file, hover over share, choose publish to web, but this time I'm gonna click embed. Once again, I have very similar settings, including the time limit for advancing. So this time I'm gonna keep it on three seconds. I'm going to check both of those boxes again, but this time I can also choose the slide size. Now I'm gonna choose medium to start, but I can always play with that if needed. From there, it's gonna generate this code. So I want to make sure I highlight the entire thing, and then I'm going to copy it, which again is Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC. Now I'm gonna come over to my website. This is just within Google Sites, which is free to use, and I'm going to choose that embed button. I'm going to click embedded code and I'm going to paste that code that I copied. Click next, it's gonna give me a little preview of what this will look like. And obviously it's very large right now, but I will be able to resize it. So I'm gonna click insert. It's going to pop it onto my site. And of course I can move it around wherever I would like it to go. But in order to see the full set of slides, I'm gonna click and drag this over. And I can see that it's still looking a little too big. So I'm gonna come back to my Google Slides. I'm gonna switch it down to a size small. Once again, I'm going to copy the code, come back to my Google Sites, and I'm going to click the edit button. So it's that little pencil icon right over top. And this time I'm going to delete the code I already had, paste in the new one I just copied, click next. It's gonna give me that preview. I can tell it is smaller this time. I'm gonna click save. Okay, that is a much better size. So I can resize this over. And of course I can drag it around wherever I would like it on the slides. But then that way this automatic looping slideshow can be displayed on my class website for any families who couldn't attend. And finally, it doesn't have to just be used with families. You can also use it with your students. Let's say students are working on a group project and instead of printing things out for them, you want to display directions digitally, but it's too much information for one slide. You could create a series of slides. I would recommend keeping it to no more than about three. That way students can see the information quickly and they don't have to wait for a really long loop in order to get to the slide they need. Uh, I'd love to be in the loop, David. But you could then have that displayed on a loop in the background while students are working so they can easily look up at the board and get the answers they need. Now let's move on to the answers to those frequently asked questions. One of the questions I always get asked is, Michelle, what does publish to the web even mean? Essentially, it means you are allowing that Google Slide slideshow to be available on the internet rather than just your Google account. Even for the internet, it's pretty shocking. Now, if you are using a Google account that was generated by an organization, such as your district, you may have some additional settings where you can choose to publish to only those within the district or specific people within the district rather than to the web as a whole. So that gives you a little bit more security if you're worried about the information being available. But definitely keep in mind that when you do publish to the web, you are making that content available and searchable. And if that is something 
something you are worried about, you can always unpublish as soon as you're done using the slideshow. So that brings us to the next FAQ, which is how do I stop publishing to the web? In order to do that, you're gonna come back to file, hover over share, select publish to web. But this time under published content and settings, you're gonna click stop publishing. Once again, it's gonna prompt you with another window. You're gonna click okay. And then you will notice that link you generated has disappeared. You can always publish and then unpublish as many times as you need to. The next frequently asked question is, what if I don't see the publish to the web option? If you don't see that as an option, it is possible that the administrator of your account, and when I say administrator, I don't necessarily mean your principal, I mean whoever is in charge of your Google account, has that setting turned off. So in order to publish to the web, you would have to consult that person and see if that option can be turned back on. And the last FAQ is, do I need to do anything if I've made changes to my slides? Let's say that you noticed a typo or you added a slide. The good news is once you have published to the web, you don't need to do anything. It will automatically update, but sometimes there is a lag of a few minutes. So give it five to 10 minutes and then those changes should be reflected. That is it. That is how to create a looping slideshow in Google Slides. As I mentioned at the beginning, I do have written step-by-step -step directions on my website. The link for that will be down below, along with the links for the template for the back to school slides that I showed you, as well as the link to the video on how to create a class website, if that is of interest for you. But I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.